Hi, I've put some slides together to help me explain how it is that you can make sure that you get the right size heat pump for your dwelling. So first of all, let's just uh, say that an air source heat pump is something that can replace a, a gas boiler. Uh, it supplies hot water for the uh, domestic hot water for the, the sinks and showers and so on, and also water to heat the radiators to keep your home warm. And they typically come in various sizes. You get little ones that may be three kilowatts, uh, and then there's five and seven, there's gold deluxe ones perhaps, and then there's the big, the big heat pumps, the eight kilowatts, 11 kilowatts, and they go up even more as well. So those are the sizes. And how do you pick which one to, uh, to have for your home? Uh, so how big a heat pump do I need? Well, uh, you can replace this question by a second question which will lead you to the right answer uh, and that is this question which is what heating power do I need to raise the temperature by one degree celsius so if you're in a dwelling of some kind you want it to get a little bit warmer one degree warmer how much extra power do you have to put in we'll be able to get to the heat pump size if we answer this question first so dwellings are all very different so here's a uh, uh, a detached house or a representation of a detached house and when you start putting power in it uh, it starts leaking out so it flows out through the windows it flows out through the walls it flows out through the floor uh, so particularly on the ground floor of a property and through the roof uh, and you see every one of these sort of types of dwellings is different so if you this is a sort of middle terraced house and again obviously heat will come out the windows uh, and so on and out the roof but here you don't have to worry about heat going out the sides because your neighbors pretty much keep their house the same temperature you do uh, uh, but you have to worry about heat coming out the, the the floor but whereas if you're an end of terrace you can lose a lot of heat out the side of a house uh, alternatively if you're in a flat you again you worry about the windows but you don't have to worry about the floors because in general you're uh, your neighbours above you and below you will keep their flats at roughly the same temperature, but you do have to worry about the walls. So every dwelling is unique. Uh, and so to find out uh, the answer to this question, there are basically three answers, uh, three ways to do it. Uh, and I want to tell you about the third way. Uh, so uh, here are the three ways. First of all, you can do a calculation. So uh, if you're installers are micro certificate micro generation certification part of the micro generation certification scheme mcs installers then they recommend that the installers do a complicated uh, survey so a survey and they measure the size of all your rooms the walls which ones are exterior walls uh, the type of windows and they put it all into a spreadsheet and out comes the recommended heating load now the problem with this is it's really quite complicated and I have experience, I'm not very experienced in this field, but I have experience of people coming out with completely the wrong answer, but because the spreadsheet said it, it, it gets installed. Now the other way is to do an experiment, uh, and that is also not easy. So this is one I did on the house. So this started back in 2018, 20, no, November 2018, and this shows the heating demand so this is the difference between the temperature outside and the temperature inside. Uh, and so you can see the demand goes up in winter, down in summer, uh, up in winter, down in summer, and so on. And what I did was I measured the temperature outside my house, because uh, I'm just slightly obsessive like that, uh, and put these are the weekly averages. Uh, and then I also measured the gas consumption by reading the gas meter once a week. Uh, and so that's plotted in blue on the same graph and you can see that as the uh, when the demand goes up when it gets cold outside the gas consumption goes up but yeah it's not rocket science but what's sort of shocking is just quite how closely they correlate and by looking at these uh, uh, curves together it's possible to work out how much heating power you're using for each degree celsius you raise the uh, temperature above the background, above the outside temperature. You can also see a funny thing on this graph that, uh, at this, that here's the heating demand and it goes up and down each winter, but the blue curve starts off big and then it goes middle and then it here is really low. 
So what we've what I did here was I put insulation on the house so it takes much less gas to meet the heating demand. The temperature inside was constant throughout these ones. And then over here we got rid of the gas and installed the heat pump. And you see, roughly speaking, it appears to be about the right size. It's doing it's keep been keeping us warm. Uh, and then there's the rule of thumb, uh, which is just says that what you do is to work out this heat transfer coefficient. How much heating power do I need to raise the temperature by one Celsius? To work that out, all you do is you take your annual gas consumption and divide by 57.3. So this is a really, really easy way to come up with a good answer for almost no effort. Here's the effort required uh, for the calculation. It's, it's a decent amount of calculation. For the experiment, it's a long time. You need a winter time. You can't do it in summer. Uh, you need at least a week uh, to a year. And then for the rule of thumb, it takes less than a minute. So the, this talk is about using this rule of thumb. Uh, so uh, here's the example of using it. So the heat transfer curve is, is, is you get from your annual gas usage. Now, it, it maybe your uh, person who reads the gas bill and records it, that's a very smart thing to do. Or, but uh, if you get gas bills, and almost everybody does, you can look on there and it will have an estimate of your annual consumption. Normally it's on the sort of about your tariff part. This one's from EDF, this one's from Octopus. And so it tells you how many kilowatt hours of gas they expect you to use. It's better if you can get how many you actually used, but that's what they expect. Uh, and so what you do is if you've used 15,000 kilowatt hours, you divide 15,000 by 57.3 to get this number, 262 watts per degree Celsius. So if I want to raise the temperature of uh, this house, or this was the figure for the house before I did any improvements, if I wanted to raise the temperature, I'd have to uh, put in 262 watts continuously for every degree I wanted it to rise above the background. Uh, and then if you add that up over a day, uh, that comes to 6.3 kilowatt hours. So you can tell from that how much extra it would cost because you, you use the cost per kilowatt hour of the gas to, to do that. Uh, so then you can begin to see now how this is going to work, that instead of raising it by one degree Celsius, how much uh, extra power would you use to raise it by 20 degrees Celsius? So that's basically the heat pump load the heat pump will need to meet in the on the coldest days so and that comes out to f you just multiply the 262 watts per degree celsius we worked out previously we just multiply that by 20 so we get 5236 watts or 5.2 kilowatts and that'll that's 126 kilowatt hours of heating per day and so that's the rule of thumb uh, and so if the rule of thumb for the heat pump size is basically just the heat transfer coefficient times 20 and it comes out at 5.2 kilowatts. You can see you just take the gas, divide by 2,900, there's your answer. It's a very simple and straightforward thing to do. For those of you who hate formulas and maths, you can uh, do it on a graph. You, uh, here is the annual consumption, gas consumption along the bottom. You find your gas consumption, you go up and uh, then you go across here and the uncertainty is something like this so you can sort of see what range you're likely to uh, fall into so here's the heat pump size so again 15,000 kilowatt hours go up here and you go across to the 5.2 kilowatt size like i said these lines are some indicator of the uncertainty in the formula so if you want to be extra cautious, you could go up to the top and make a slight, slightly bigger one. But I've already incorporated <laughs> some uh, cushioning into the thing. So it's the best thing I would recommend you is to go for the central line. Uh, so one of the big questions is, do these formulas work? And the answer is yes, they do. And, and the next question is, why <laughs> do these formulas work? And the answer is quite quite clever and I, it's not my cleverness but I, I, just to explain that this thing by using the annual gas usage assuming that you were the person in the dwelling before this gives you uh, you presumably got the house comfortable the way you want it so this tells you 
what uh, amount of power you need to put in, what amount of energy you require over a whole heating season in order to give you, uh, in order to give you a comfortable home. Now this number, so that's the gas usage, and this number on the bottom is based on what are called heating degree days. Uh, and it's a measure of uh, the place you live uh, in, on Earth, where, uh, how cold does it get and for how long? Uh, so, uh, and so that's uh, the heating demand is measured in heating degree days. So let me just explain that. So this is the graph I showed you before. This shows the heating demand in, in my home from back in 2018 up to, up to this week, actually. Uh, and uh, if we take this year, for example, uh, you can see that the heating demand. So back, I guess that's about September then, uh, that there was a little bit of heating demand at, each day during the week, uh, but that as you go into winter, the heating demand becomes bigger and it becomes bigger for longer. So if you imagine all these daily heating demands, then and you can focus on this, then this area here is a measure of the heating demand over a whole season. Uh, uh, and th th that area there is measured in degrees Celsius multiplied by days, degrees Celsius of heating demand multiplied by days. And so if you look around the United Kingdom, you can, uh, using the heating degree days uh, website, you can look up uh, how many heating degree days there are per year uh, in different locations. So here's a chart of them and here they are over the graph. So uh, broadly speaking, it takes more heating as you go further north. Uh, some places are quite mild, other places quite, quite, uh, quite relatively chilly. But in the United Kingdom, if you just take all those places, that's basically south of Manchester, the formula I showed you earlier applies within about 7%. And 7% for something like this is pretty close uh, approximation. If you go north there, you add another 15% up to Edinburgh, Scotland, and then north of that, uh, add another 20% to the heat pump size. So uh, now it may be that you want to do the calculation for where you live. So you can look up the number of heating degree days and you can, this is the, if you take the formula that I gave you apart into all its little bits, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and this assumes 90% boiler efficiency you may know better about your boiler. That's a, a good guess for a modern boiler. Uh, and here's the number of heating degree days for Dungeness. Maybe you have a, <laughs> you, you live right by the nuclear power station down at Dungeness. Uh, and then you can see that the heating, heat transfer coefficient, that's the amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature one degree is 289 uh, watts per degree Celsius. And the heat pump size is just that times 20. And so it comes out at 5.7 kilowatts if you live there. Okay, so other considerations. Uh, let's just go through these. So some people set their thermostat to 20 run rather than 20. Uh, that's cool. So it'll typically take another 12% uh, onto the heat pump size to, to, to meet that. We set the thermostat to 20 degrees Celsius during the day and only 15 at night. Lots of people do that. Uh, and the answer is that you need to pick the heat pump size to match the 20 Celsius. And all, the reason for that is that you want it to be 20 Celsius at some point. So your heat pump's got to be able to do that. But also heat pumps don't operate quite the same way as boilers do, because boilers are enormously powerful. So you can switch the heat off at night. It'll cool quite rapidly and then uh, when you switch the heat, the boiler on, you put it on an hour before you wake up and it puts a gigantic blast of heat at 20 or 25 kilowatts of heat into your home. Uh, and uh, heat pumps can't do that. They're super at some things, but that's the kind of thing they can't, not very good at. Uh, so we live in the Pennines 150 meters above sea level. It's colder here. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, typically for each 300 meters above sea level, that's roughly a thousand feet, uh, add about 10% to the required heat pump size. So if you live 150 meters above sea level, add 5% to the heat pump size. Or you could go and get the degree days for a really local weather station right next to where you live. Uh, we heat with heating oil. Well, 
just by coincidence, the num if you uh, find the number of litres of heating oil uh, that you use, then you just multiply that by 10 and that will give you the equivalent gas usage that you would have used if you'd been using a boiler and then you can use the formulas. So if you use 1,500 litres of oil a year, that's equivalent to 15,000 kilowatt hours of gas. And what about domestic hot water? Yeah, so the gas does two things, or well, it does three things actually normally in most households. It does cooking, it does domestic hot water and it does heating. But of all these things, heating is normally overwhelmingly the major part. Then comes domestic hot water and then a little bit of it is cooking. Uh, so in our house, uh, it's uh, about uh, one or two percent is cooking. It's very, very small. Uh, domestic hot water is about three to four percent or something like that. So I haven't included domestic hot water. What it does is it produces by not including it, it produces a slight overestimate for the heat pump size you need. So I feel that's safe. So here's the summary. Uh, here are the two formula that I think are going to be really useful uh, to use as rules of thumb. Uh, and I think these will give answers within about 10% of the correct heat pump size. And so if someone suggests a heat pump, which is much, much larger than this rule of thumb suggests, rule of thumb suggests, you need to ask them, uh, you need to have a discussion about why that is. Uh, like I said, in my experience, I've come across two people uh, that have been recommended heat pumps that were three times larger than they actually required. And that's a waste of everyone's time. Uh, so so for more details, I wrote articles on the web uh, about those. They, they're much more tedious. And if you want to find out more, go to the wonderful Degree Days website, degreedays.net. Uh, and there you can download uh, free data for three years back. And if you want to pay them to get your data for much longer, so you can see how it varies from year to year, then if you get the, uh, you can pay them nine pounds a day and you can download as much data as you can, as you like in a day. Uh, so thank you very much. That's the end of the talk. I hope you like the idea. My name is Michael De Podesta. This is my blog, Protons for Breakfast. Uh, this is my Twitter name and this is an email. Thank you very much.